our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Keith Bell, here. Edward Keller. Absent and excused. Whitey Simon, here. Christine Holcomb. Here. Harold Bain. Here. Mark Borchardt. Here. Tom Cozell. Here. Oh, he is. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> I didn't see him. Robert Musling. Here. And Kathy Schweiker. Here. Chair. Thank you. Item number four is amendments to agenda. Madam Chair, um, at the request of our planner, we'd like to remove the under number seven unfinished business, the composting, to a future meeting. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed. Thank you. Item number five is approval of minutes. They look pretty good. I move that we accept the minutes of our last uh, April 10th uh, Planning Commission meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed. Minutes are approved. Item number six is new business. Under new business, we have two items. The first item is the site review for 3820 Fruit Road. If the applicant is present and would like, if you'd like to come to the podium, state your name, and I believe you should be in receipt of the review from our planners. And Donald Johnson, and yes, that's correct. I do have the review from the planners. Uh, so my purpose today really was to try to be clear on what application I need to file. Um, originally, when I sat with Sid Brown, he was making wanted me to be clear on what my plans were for the property and to try to include everything uh, as possible that you would ever dream of that you want on the site. So it kind of was a setback for me. I was like, okay. I, um, I have to do a little more thinking. I purchased the property um, last June, I believe, and uh, with real no, no, uh, no plan other than uh, use it for storage and for bulk, pretty much reuse, pretty much what it's been used for. Um, unfortunately, it's turned into a little bit more planning, uh, future buildings that might not happen in the next year, which I'm seeing in the review that I shouldn't need on the plan. So I'm just trying to be here today to get an idea so the planning commission knows what my purpose is so we can move forward I guess if that <laughs> makes sense well did you review the site plan review that came from Bill Swapster and the comments to the planning commission yes I have okay do you have any feedback in regards to the items they pointed out uh, yes, I do have a, a, a few things, but I think, again, as you're looking at the site plan that was presented, um, it really is not what I'm looking to do uh, for the current plan. I'm not going to be putting a plan, uh, building there. There's not going to be employees or parking or retail sales out of the site. We have an office on Point Tremble where we uh, handle our, our business, and the site will be used mainly just for bulk storage and cold storage of our equipment um, and uh, materials that we use for our landscaping business. Will you be having any accessory buildings at all? Uh, no, currently there is just storage. I, the plan is to have maybe a, uh, a temporary office as we begin to build possibly a, a, a building in the back for um, our equipment and our garage, that was the idea. Uh, but again, <laughs> unfortunately, the advice that was given probably made this more than really what it was. I was just looking for a reuse of be at a storage, store equipment and bulk material there. And then in the future, I would definitely like to build a building, and, uh, but it's not gonna be within the one year clause that's, that I've found out from the review. Um, uh, so I'd probably, you know, we want to take that part off as far as the building. This is not going to happen in the next year. Um, I'm also in receipt 
of a letter dated April 18th from Sid Brown. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure you have it too. The planning commission members should have it. It's um, basically the Clay Township Ability Department requests the following item be included in any motion for approval of 3820 Fruit Road. Due to the type of facilities, the applicant must provide or include a sanitary facility and bathroom on the property. Porter Johns are not acceptable. I just want to bring that to your attention. Yeah, I just received that actually today. I, it, I was verbally notified of that uh, recommendation that was going to be in front of the commission. But then again, I think that was his recommendation was based on the fact that we're going to have buildings and employees and office space there, which uh, is not going to occur. The only time the employees will be there when they're picking up equipment, uh, picking up material, things of that nature. And so I don't know if I would still need that for uh, the, the real purpose. So am I right in believing that you're going to be using it as existing conditions as it is today? Correct. And this site plan is, you don't need Yeah, it. unfortunately, I, yeah, it got <laughs> over-exaggerated. I mean, I, I, the idea is that one day that what you're looking at as far as site plan will uh, be an idea of what I'm looking to do. But as of right now, I'm just looking to use the property as it has already existed. So um, there was a note on here about being 50 feet away mm -hmm. from the right away from the road to where my existing parking uh, is. And I just measured it and I was a little, uh, I don't understand because I'm about 78 feet from the road. I'm, a, I'm more than 50 feet from the ditch for the telephone pole, which I'm assuming is the right away where we would measure. So I know that was a note on there. Um, again, that was all existing. So I don't know if they're just looking for your opinion on that. That was item number eight. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Um, Seven? Yes. Seven. had a question on eight as well. But. Well, does the planner, plan, planning commission have any more questions? Or I was going to ask maybe Eric, who wrote this review, to maybe respond to what you have just said to us. Any commission members, any? Oh, sure. what? Any questions for the applicant well, at the moment? Well, I have or a question. Ask um, basically, if you're not going to have the have the site plan as written and submitted, would they be in compliance with using the existing conditions? And that's for our planners. So uh, we reviewed this as a new site plan um, for two reasons. One was because of the uh, proposed buildings. That's one of the uh, criteria that kicks you into a site plan. And also because it's an entirely outdoor use. Um, that's another criteria that can kick you into a site plan. However, um, if you feel that this is a, a extension of the previous industrial use, um, you can just consider it that way. Can you hear anything back there? No. no. I'm having a hard time hearing it here. <laughs> so uh, an option you have with this use is that you could consider it as an extension of the previous industrial use and then have the applicant withdraw the site plan and just address the new use that way. We reviewed it as a new site plan review because of the two proposed buildings and also because the use is entirely outdoors. Those are two criteria that kicks you into the site plan review requirements. Um, but if you're comfortable reviewing it as an extension of the previous industrial use, um, that can be done outside of the uh, site plan review. Are the materials going to be consistent with what's there now? Uh, yeah, I, well, the materials that were there were stone and topsoil and sand, and yes, they would be consistent. I'll have a little different style stone and stuff that right. was currently there, but um, when I bought the property, there were pea gravel and topsoil piles that already existed and um, some river rock. So we're going to have a little more decorative stone uh, there and topsoil and sand, but very similar, yes. I, I understand. I hear you're going to have uh, mulch as well. Yeah, uh, we do do mulching. I noticed that there was a, some qualifications on the mulch, and I did have a question regarding that as well. Uh, there's a it, it requires a surfaced uh, row, but I don't know if that means gravel as well that's currently there, or if it has to be concrete or asphalt for that. Our planners have an answer for that one. I don't. <laughs> I don't know what the ordinance says. The, 
the review says, lastly, mold storage areas have not been indicated, which would require surfaced roadway access. Right. It's not specific to mulch. It's specific to uh, combustible materials, which mulch typically can be if it's in large piles. Um, and the requirement is for surfaced roadway access. Um, so True road you could accept a certain surfacing material, um, but it would be ideal to have that on a plan to show where the mulch will be stored um, and what the access would need to be. Um, and that could be potentially something that's reviewed by the building department. Um, they typically are, are more so involved with the fire and the uh, public safety uh, levels of reviews. Any further questions for the planning? Uh, composite piles? You gonna have any composite piles at all? We will be dumping uh, composite on the site, but it'll be hauled off site, so it'll be temporary. So our trucks will pull in and dump the grass that we acquire from the lawn cutting, and then we'll be hauling it off site to a dump that we pay for currently because due to the smell of grass, I'm not even interested in having it on my property. Well, I'm gonna ask this to the planners. Is this something at this point since what you reviewed seems to be totally different now that we're talking to the applicant in person, but maybe he's looking to do that. Maybe we need to do a little bit different approach. You've had circumstances somewhat similar to this with other uses where people have asked to come in and uh, basically continue a use that may not be 100% conforming with all site conditions. So the question here is, if you feel that what is proposed is substantially similar to what has historically been on this property and you're comfortable with it continuing until the time this applicant wants to make additional improvements, uh, you, could, you could do that without actually approving a site plan. And essentially you would have them uh, contact the building department regarding any other improvements that would be necessary to satisfy any other codes, non-zoning related codes, uh, and then they would just proceed with operation that way. So that's one option you have. Um, if you feel like this um, should go through a site plan approval process, they would have to amend the plan that they've submitted and would come back before you and you would review it. So it's really, um, these are, you know, you, not every case that comes before you perfectly fits within a box of exactly, particularly when we're talking about previous uses that are um, where there's a request to extend that use. So I think you certainly have the ability to accept uh, the continuation of the use that was already there, um, assuming it's substantially um, um, within this, the same level of impact and isn't going to be uh, increasing impact on, on neighbors and is uh, similar to what had been there in the past. So I think you have the ability to accept that um, if you'd like, just like you've done in other cases. Uh, but if you feel like this is something that's different or something that you feel you wanna see uh, compliance with certain ordinance items that may not be addressed, then you can ask them to resubmit the site plan and, and postpone action until a revised site plan is presented to you. Thank you. So I'll go back to planning commission members. Any thoughts? Well, I would have to agree that it seems as just a continuation of the existing usage at this point. Okay. Any other comments? Well, you're going from construction materials to landscaping materials. It could be manure. It could be anything dumped, dumped over there. But... <clears throat> is the concrete block storage area new or existing? That's proposed. It's actually existing. Yeah. I was just looking to expand it. There were already concrete block uh, there. Um, he had about five bins that were existed. We're just reconstructing them is our plan because they're sitting really low and we just have a different uh, use well, not different use, but uh, different size bins for the material that we're looking to store. 
so smaller exactly. bins so we can have multiple different products on the property. There will be no manure, that's for sure. I'm comfortable with it. Sure. Yeah, I'm good with it. Yeah. Mark, you have any comments? No, I'm good with it. That, uh, we can postpone it and or... Uh, You'll have to come back and make changes. You'll have to be here. You know. You know, well, what, 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 would you, what would be your motion that you would propose? How's that? Do we need one? Yeah, I don't know if we didn't just let them continue using it as existing and when you feel free uh, to make the site improvements in another plan, come back to the planning committee and start the process right. over. Do I understand Make a motion the, to close uh, this? <sighs> so what, what I might suggest, uh, through the chair, uh, what I might suggest is, is a motion that you accept the explanation given by the applicant tonight as being consistent with previous activity on the site um, and just have it on the record that you that they would have to come back in if any additional site improvements are made at a later date for site plan approval. Support. Got it. Support. Well, no, you can't do that. <laughs> But you did indicate, did you not, that you had to uh, increase the height of the storage bins? They were too low or something? Uh, no, as far as where they're sitting and the elevation of the property, not the height of the actual okay. bins. They're only two block high bins, and the material will only probably be a couple feet above that, which I think falls within the site plan uh, of six feet, I believe I read in the review. So. Are you moving those storage, the concrete storage block closer to the road? or? Actually, further away, uh, and, and, and with the advice of the review here, it appears that we got to be 150 feet. They weren't uh, 150 feet, so we oh. are moving in the other direction, right? But, and that, that's uh, kind of why I was asking about, if, right? You know, trying to get a hold right. of where where you're moving at, because mm -hmm. that'd be be the only biggest concern I'd see with continuing it with the, is with the black area. Yeah, the the last bin that was there was about 100 feet so we got to move a couple bins 50 feet the other way but other than that uh, i feel that we're complying with the site plan that we may or may not need <laughs> so i appreciate your time can i just bring one more thing because i read said letter at the beginning he's still even with this he's concerned about the sanitary facilities bathroom on the property port of johns are not acceptable any comments from our planner on that one well, obviously you'll have to readdress that, but typically if there aren't permanent employees, if this is just a storage place where a truck comes, either dumps or else reloads and then moves on, it may not be required, but he'll have to take that up with the building department. That could be done separately. Okay. Okay. I'll make a motion. I'd like to make a motion that we accept the explanation from the applicant that the site will remain consistent with the current use for 3820 Fruit Street, formerly CJ Trucking and Excavating. Support. Uh, could I uh, add at least one thing to that, that uh, uh, based on the applicant's uh, request to pull the site plan? Based on the applicant's request to pull the site plan. Thank you. Support. Do you need a moment? Yes, you do. <laughs> Just a moment. Maggie writes this out. Say CJ Trucking. CJ? CJ. 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 Jerry. Close that out and um, bang. Try to 
trying to say it slow enough to get up to the water through it. All right, I have a request. Why do you reread the motion, please? Accept the applicant's explanation to continue use at uh, 3820 Fruit as CJ Trucking with the site plan pulled by applicant. Everybody, go ahead. Could you? Did, it, did I miss the part? Did it say consistent with the current use? Uh, with, yeah, as uh, C J trucking with the site plan. Continue use of 30. Okay, uh, good. I get it. All right, everybody understand? Yeah. All right, roll call. Keith Fell. Yes. Edward Kelly excused. Whitey Simon, yes. Christine Holcomb. Yes. Harold Wright Bain. Yes. Mark Borchardt. Yes. Tom Cosell. Yes. Robert Musley. Yes. Kathy Schweiker. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Contact the building department. We'll get you on the right track, okay, please? Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. All right, moving on to item number 6B, which is a public hearing for special land use. And I'm going to open the public meeting at 725. And before we start the public hearing, Christine is going to read on the back of our agendas is the rules for public hearings, and she's going to read them for us. Number one, all comments must be made through the chairperson. Comments directed to the applicant from the audience are prohibited. Two, individuals wishing to speak have time limits. Three minutes for each member of the general public and six minutes for a spokesperson of a larger group such as a subdivision association, condo association, business group, and similar groups. Number three, anyone wishing to speak is asked to sign the sheet in the sh sign the sheet provided. However, anyone wishing to speak will be given the opportunity. Number four, each individual be will be allowed to speak once. It will be the chairperson's decision as to whether rebuttal comments will be allowed. Number five, citizens may appoint a spokesperson to represent those who agree on a point of view. And number six, public comments on a specific public hearing request should be made during the public hearing for that item. Thank, Thank you. you. I also want to let everyone know that Keith is going to be our um, timekeeper for the three and six minutes. So he'll give some sort of an indication when you get to that mark. But we're going to start off first with Matt, who's one of our planners, to make a presentation. Hi, hey, good evening. So um, tonight we have before you the public hearing for 7317 Dyke Road. Um, there it's a special approval land use. Oh, the project is located, as I said, on Dyke Road. It's on the um, west side of Dyke Road, south side there, um, on the north side of the township. This is what the project looks like. Um, the island looks like when it um, the water level is low. I know in our review we note that it um, varies between four and ten acres. This is what the island looks like closer to ten acres. And this image right here is um, more of the existing conditions from last year. Um, the site is zoned C3 commercial um, and it is bordered by residential to both the north south and are both the north and south of the site um, as well as there are some residential uses to the east but those are zoned C3 and those are in this area right there. And I will note that this area is currently undeveloped. It's zoned residential, but there are no homes there. This is the access to the island. As you'll, um, it is currently a dirt um, and bridge, and um, they are proposing improvements to this as well. So the project, as was, as was reviewed and um, is in front of you, um, is an event destination that would include the following uses, a restaurant, um, and that includes the pool area as well with a uh, transient marina. There will be a future bathhouse um, to service the marina. And then outdoor dining and live entertainment at two event areas. Um, event area one is proposed at a capacity of 450 people. And event area two is proposed at a capacity of 150 people. Um, and this is based on the site plan we have that's dated 2-4-2019. Um, new plans were submitted earlier this week, so those we will need to review any new changes going forward, but um, I just wanted to note that we are still reviewing the plans that you have in front of you and the review letter you have in front of you. 
So the site as proposed does meet the dimensional setbacks and then all the dimensional requirements of the site um, as we've reviewed. Um, this is the, all of those are listed. I won't read all of those off, but we did measure them. They all meet the setbacks from the Dyke Road right of way as well as from the um, property lines. This is the site plan, um, the overall site plan of the, uh, of the project. Um, so if, as we move to this is the south half of the project, this will show you where the um, restaurant and permanent building is proposed along with the, uh, the pool area sort of attached to that. Um, this is event area two, so that's the 150 person event area. And then one would be, it's right here, just to the north of the building, and then it stretches a little further up. You'll see the rest of that on the next slide. So most of the development is proposed on the south side of the island, near the entrance. Um, so this is the, an up, a close up of the uh, restaurant and pool area. The pool is proposed to go right, uh, right up to the water's edge. Um, it would be, built in conjunction or um, attached to the restaurant, so it would be accessed through the restaurant and, um, and, and part of that development there. So this is currently the area, um, as we go over, this would be proposed for um, 490 um, capacity, and then the restaurant would have about 100 people in it. So this total site right here with the restaurant and pool is proposed to have a capacity of 590 people, based on that, and that's based on building codes. This is a floor plan for the restaurant. Um, as you can see, there's a, a bar inside. There's a, um, an area off to the side there that has some doors that open up to make it sort of an indoor-outdoor feeling patio, but that is regulated as an indoor seating area. Um, so that has changed since the project was originally proposed. Um, and then they would have access, as I said, to, um, to the outdoor area. This would be the bar um, and then the pool and pool surrounding pool area. So looking at parking requirements, I know we've talked about this a lot. I'm going to go over um, where we currently stand with these, though. So um, as proposed, the restaurant would have a maximum occupancy of 134 patrons, which would um, require 67 parking spaces. So the site plan um, that you have in front of you provides 106 parking spaces on site. Um, the pool area we uh, regulated is regulated at one parking space per every three occupants, um, which would um, it has a maximum occupancy of 456. Um, that requires 152 parking spaces. So, um, as as you'll know in the chart, that is um, over the required or the provided 100, 106. Event area one is also regulated at one parking space for every three people. Um, that is proposed to have, um, so there's a little, this, this changed a little bit, so they're at 450 right now, so that requires 150 parking spaces, not the 155 that's listed there. Um, and then event area two is proposed for, for 150 pers um, person occupancy, which would require 15 space, or 50 spaces. So altogether, the structures, the um, restaurant, pool area, event area one, and event area two would require a, um, 424 parking spaces. Um, the site provides 106, that um, leaves it 318 deficient. If we look at the subtotal, um, that is the subtotal without the waivers. The applicant has requested two parking waivers. The first one um, is requires planning commission approval. They are proposing to provide 25% of their on-site parking via the transient marina so that boaters can park there as well. So if you were to consider that, that would be a waiver of 106 spaces and that would bring the deficiency down to 212. Uh, the second waiver being requested is to um, allow half of their parking to be provided off-site um, through a valet service. So that would require planning commission and township attorney approval for the agreement. Um, so that would uh, require two or 212 spaces to be parked off-site, um, which would then bring them into compliance if both of these waivers were granted. So 
We talked a little bit about the on-site parking lot design our, at our last meeting. Um, again, we still are not in receipt of any new plans, so we can't confirm that these all meet the dimensional requirements. They do appear to meet this, the intent of the ordinance. They have the right amount of space. You'll just note that there are some spaces that are um, uh, do not uh, are questioning if they were 10 feet wide, but um, again, all of the spaces combined do meet the required interior parking lot landscape. We received some communication from the applicant. We discussed this at the last meeting um, that they are proposing two parking seasons. Um, the off season would run from November 1st through no, uh, May 1st. It would um, require parking for only the restaurant. Um, which is 67 spaces. They have provided 106, so their off-season parking lot would be compliant. The on-season from May 1st to November 1st when the event areas would be operating, um, where that was the scenario we just discussed where they would be 318 deficient without any waivers. Um, and I listed the waivers there at the bottom again. Those were the transient marina for 25% um, provided by boats and 50% to be provided off-site um, only for valet use. So the collecting, collective parking proposal is approximately a half a mile away located at 7479 Dyke Road. Um, this is a, um, a street view of the site last year. Um, as you can see, it is currently approved as a um, boat storage lot. It is not improved as a parking lot. It's uh, currently dirt and gravel and grass. Um, so we have noted in our review that this, um, per the township ordinance, would be required to be brought into um, compliance for a parking lot, which would be um, paving, screening, and interior landscaping. So here's some more, um, this is another view of the collective parking with the street that it's along. So again, um, there are residential uses adjacent on three sides. Um, so this is a little bit more about the off-site parking improvements. It's, um, as I mentioned, it is currently used as a winter boat storage lot. Um, so the idea would be that when the boats aren't being stored there in the on season, they'd be able to park there. And then when off season, when the boats are parked there during the winter, they would not need this lot. So they've um, proposed to res resurface it with asphalt millings, um, two to three inch top base applied and compacted. Um, so it's, it wouldn't be, it would just be a compacted gravel. Um, they've proposed a four and a half foot tall by 10 foot wide wooden fence. Um, the location is not 100% clear. It's not shown on any site plans. So we would ask that that be included um, if you were to consider this on the site plan application for this parking lot. Um, this proposal is a change of use from storage to parking. Um, an, applica an application for site plan approval for the new parking lot that is located off-site has not been provided. Only a concept sketch was provided. So if you were to consider this, they would have to um, submit a site plan and have that reviewed and it would have to show all of the improvements proposed on the site plan. So this is again um, a close-up of the lot. This is the lot right here. It's got some boats on it right now. Um, this was my best estimate as to where the fence was proposed. I'm going to let the applicant confirm that. Um, this is the sketch plan that we pr were provided. This was um, labeled as a proof of concept to show that they could fit that number of cars there. Um, again, you'll notice this is um, missing some of the site plan elements that we normally require, dimensions, screening, landscaping. Um, so this is, again, just provided as a conceptual for your consideration and to show that it, it can be done. Your special approval land use standards are the nine standards listed on the last pages of your review. I'm going to read them off tonight since I don't believe we've actually read all of them, um, just so that everyone in the audience and the planning commissioners have all heard um, all of the criteria that you are looking to, um, that you are reviewing th this project against. And again, this is for the outdoor dining and live entertainment aspects of it, which would take place at the pool area and in both of the event areas. So special land use approval standards. The Planning Commission shall review the particular circumstances and facts applicable to each proposed special land use. In this case, the request is to have live outdoor entertainment 
in terms of the following standards and requirements and shall make a determination as to whether the proposed the use proposed and subject site meet the following standards and requirements number one will be in accordance with the general objectives intent and purposes of this ordinance number two will be in accordance with the goals and objectives of the clay township master plan Number three, will be designed, constructed, operated, and maintained in harmony with the existing or intended character of the general vicinity, and that such a use will not change the essential character of the area in which it is proposed. Number four, it will not be hazardous or disturbing the existing or future uses in the same general vicinity and in the community as a whole. Number five, will be served adequately by essential public facilities and services, such as highways, streets, police and fire protection, stormwater drainage, refuse disposal, water and sewage facilities, and schools or persons or agencies responsible for the establishment of the proposed use shall be able to provide adequately for such services. This is continued number six, um, will not create excessive additional requirements at public cost for facilities and services and will not be detrimental to the economic welfare of the community. Number seven, will not involve uses, activities, processes, materials, and equipment or conditions of operation that will be detrimental to any person, property, or general welfare by reason of excessive production of traffic, noise, vibration, smoke, fumes, glare, or odors. Number eight, will ensure that the environment shall be preserved in its natural state insofar as practicable by minimizing tree and soil removal and by topographic modifications which result in maximum harmony with adjacent areas. And number nine, will not impede the normal and orderly development and improvement of surrounding property for uses permitted within the zoning district. So those are what you are considering while you are reviewing um, the special <coughs> land use requested for this project. So our next steps for um, this evening and for this project, I would just like to make, make clear for everyone. Um, so the applicant is going to um, give you a presentation um, after you've asked me any questions. Um, you will then receive um, any public comments if um, anyone is willing, wishing to speak. At that point, you will um, discuss the project. Um, you know, kind of let uh, based on any of the comments you hear, you can ask the planners or the applicants questions. Um, I will note that the applicant has indicated an updated site plan has been generated on um, 4-22-19, so earlier this week. Um, I did receive this on Tuesday, so it's not a part of this review, but um, that will be submitted and reviewed before any action can be taken on the project. Um, and the, I know the um, chair is going to read a letter. Um, an agent, uh, the agencies listed in the building department letter must sign off on, on, the, upda on the updated site plan. Um, that letter, again, will be read um, into the record once I am done here. Um, as I noted earlier, a separate site plan application must be considered, uh, must be submitted for the consideration of off-site parking. Um, the Planning Commission, um, as part of your discussion, should then discuss whether it needs other information from the applicant. Um, this could include a traffic study if that's one of your um, concerns. And um, if uh, there's no, if the uh, applicant is resubmitting a site plan, um, I just want to make it clear that the next meeting date regularly scheduled planning commission is for May 22nd, which would mean that we would need our plan submitted by May 3rd, which is one week from Friday. So that's the timeline. So if, if um, I just want to make the planning commission, the applicant clear that, um, that, it, that is a tight deadline if there's changes. So th those are the dates that we would be targeting. So if we do not receive a site plan, an updated site plan by May 3rd, then um, it will be considered for future meetings. And then uh, I have the site plan up here. I'm happy to answer any questions before I turn it over to the applicants. Right. I suppose I could read the letter that I 
now my... How about I read the letter of the yes. other correspondence that everybody should have in their packet, but the first one is dated April 2nd from Sid Brown, who is our building official. Dear Chair Person, the Clay Township Building Department requests the following items be included in any motion of approval for 7317 Dyke Road and list the property number before any construction begins. Building Department approval of all construction documents. Michigan Department of Transportation approval in writing. Police Department of Fire Department approval of traffic plan. Michigan Department of Environmental Quality approval of the extension of water line. Michigan Department of Environmental Quality approval of the sewer. Department of Army Corps of Engineers approval in writing. Total engineering approval by the building department. Also, please clarify that the planning commission approval is for the project, not permission to start the project. Thank you for your cooperation with these standards, Sid Brown. We also received an updated review dated April 15th from the fire department. And basically, if you would know, it says to be reviewed by plan by the building uh, planner or is there adequate functional access for the building, okay? We also have from the fire department, is the street adequate to carry the volume of traffic and turning movements needed? I believe this would be best left to MDOT. Also, is there a necessary right of way available? Again, should be looked at by MDOT, which was accompanied by a letter dated April 17th of 2019 from our fire chief, George Rose. He's also requesting the following additions. One, we need to extend six inch water main and add a hydrant at the north end of the parking lot. Two, fire detection system needs to be installed in the building. If you have any questions, please contact me. Thank you. I'll so, back over to Matt. again, I am happy to answer any questions that you have right now based on the information I just presented. I guess this may be a little premature, but on that six inch water main at, at the end of the uh, north end of the parking lot, is that going to supply the restaurant and the other facilities? I, I, I think the applicant, yes. Okay. I think that, that's probably what best answered by them. Um, one thing that I kind of see and uh, the pool area is going to be accessible from the restaurant. Correct. And if there's no changing facility, I don't see any changing facilities on the exterior of the building. And I mean, I'm not a health official, but I don't know if a health, health official is going to be allowing patrons in swimsuits to be in no shoes and walking in towels going through the restaurant. So I was wondering if there's going to have to be some sort of floor plan change that's going to affect the building. I think they have an exterior. The applicant can answer, but I think they have an exterior. Access. Yes, I think it's right here. If we look, this is the bathroom facilities. So it, well, it appears it can be accessed. I'm not sure if there's a sidewalk, but there is an exterior exit that will get you to the bathrooms without the restaurant. The connectivity of that, I cannot confirm, but based on the floor plan that we, we've received, um, you wouldn't have to necessarily walk through the restaurant. Matt, my question is regarding the offsite parking. Correct. Cor would it be correct in assuming that before we could even think about approving that as a use, that it has to be an actual parking lot Yes. So they would have to have it paved, marked, the, striped? Based on the, the way your ordinance is written, they would either have to um, bring that lot up to the parking lot standards, which would then require the 5% interior landscaping, um, screening on the outside, um, full paving, um, the spaces you know, properly dimensioned. Anything outside of that would require a variance. Which would have to go through the ZBA, correct? correct. So as it stands right now, we cannot authorize the use of that parking because technically it doesn't exist. You can conceptually consider it. Okay. <laughs> uh, 
to know that if 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 you are, if you're saying yes, we're okay with the idea that you have an offsite valet. Um, just that you know that alone, you know, there's nobody's going to be walking to and from the sites. At that point, if if you agree, then I believe the applicant would be, um, they would or no, I don't believe they would have to submit a site plan that meets all the site plan standards, and then you would consider that site plan. At that point, they would either request a variance or bring it up to to township code. Thank you. You could also you could also make it make it smaller like. Don't run all the events. Yes, yes, there are several <laughs> scenarios we'll that come back later with a more detailed engineered plan. Yes, for that area. So, the, and I believe, yeah, there, there are several options um, to, to consider here, but it doesn't all. This is that parking scenario is every every proposed area running at full capacity. And when we consider the. Uh, Parking requirements. Uh, 212 spots are supposed to be. Uh, is it 212? 212 would be requested to be provided off site. Uh, and that is due to the uh, basically the uh, uh, provision to reduce the parking is due to the fact that uh, we have the entire marina full of boats and full of people that attend there, and so we don't need that parking. Is that an assumption that I'm supposed to make? Can you say that again? We have uh, parking requirements. Yes. Of 424. Yeah. And we want to get a waiver for 106 from the uh, docking mm -hmm. facilities. Uh, are we therefore to assume that uh, 424 people possibly show up in boats rather than coming by car. They are proposing the site um, provides 150 boat slips. So that is what they are, what the site could handle. Essentially, this proposal is um, assuming that 100 or 318 people. Um, people arrive by vehicle and the other 106 would arrive by boat. Th that's the vehicles, rather. That's not the people. That's just vehicles. Right. Yes. I, I, I fail to see that uh, uh, boats necessarily do not require parking because the rest of the people still can come by car. And so we need all the parking that is requested as 424 or whatever the number is. Mm -hmm. So I have to be convinced that... Uh, Sorry, I'm having trouble hearing right now. No, the, there's some background noise. In the audience, noise. you could be quieter just because it's really hard in this room. We apologize for the acoustics, but um, this is the best we can do. Hopefully in the future we'll be better at it. So if the audience can just be quiet, you'll get your chance, okay? Thank you. We have a full capacity when all events are filled. Yes. And that capacity uh, requires 424 parking spots. Yes, that is correct. And we want a waiver for 106 parking spots because people arrive by boats. Yes. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the other people don't show all up, does it? That does not. There's, Thank it's you. Correct. I think additionally, though, I saw in the business plan and on some of the uh, parking requirements that we had uh, parking slots for employees five and two, and then somewhere in the body of the second proposal or the business plan, I saw that the uh, employees could go up to 25. That would add probably a few more people, yep. too, would it not? It would. Thank you. Hearing no more questions for me at this time. So if you'll give me one moment, I'm going to put the applicant's presentation up. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. 
party? Just give them just a minute. Why don't you identify yourself so everybody in the audience knows who's, who's talking? I'm Joe okay. Henninger. <laughs> and Brian Rose. Thank you. We put together a PowerPoint presentation to go over some of the things that we're looking at. Um, I know some of the numbers might seem a little shocking at first, but you know, basically there are things that we've worked within the ordinances and with working with you guys for the last three months, as you know, to go over uh, you know why we've done things the way that we've done, including the uh, offsite collective parking, which you know we're looking at a valet service versus a public parking lot. And I know, Keith, you had some questions about that, um, where the actual uh, customers aren't going to be driving to the lot. It's going to be a valid <coughs> service. And those would uh, occur when there is a wedding, that type of an event. Well, when they handle that, um, I did want to go over that, uh, and I know I'm supposed to reference towards the, the board. Um, we know there's a lot of rumors going around, a lot of things that people are talking about, and a lot of, uh, I guess, facts that aren't correct. Um, you know, there's quite a few that I heard, some of them. Are you ready to roll this? Okay. <coughs> Some of the rumors, you know, basically are that there were, I heard a couple people tell me, you know, there's five multimillionaires going in on this. Um, you know, it's basically me, you know, and Brian, but, you know, it's my, it's my funds. I'm putting it together. Brian's been real instrumental. He's been a good friend of mine. I'm also uh, partners with him in another business. Uh, we worked well together. We're trying to put together a concept here, um, you know, I've been coming up this way since 1961, uh, staying, my grand, grandpa bought a boat from Pete Beauregard Sr. and uh, we kept it up at Bell Harbor. So I've been coming up here for a long time and love the area. You know, we put together a plan here basically that we want to uh, be an asset for the community. Um, you know, we want to put together something. When I saw the property, you know, just fell in love with it. And, you know, we wanted to put, you know, a nice restaurant bar facility out there, you know, a marina type location, which falls within the charter in terms of their, their overall plan calls for a transient type marina. And, you know, we want to have a pool there, you know, something, you know, some, something that people can come and enjoy. Uh, in addition to that, we know it's seasonal. You know, we've talked to many different people, including, you know, Bill Rose and Jerry and some other guys that a lot of restaurants around here have gone out of business. Um, you know, we don't want to be in that position. Uh, so, you know, we need to do some type of events, outdoor events. You know, we want to do outdoor weddings. You know, uh, the view is so beautiful, the sun sets. We feel that that's something that, you know, young millennials and alike will want to come and, you know, get married here. Um, you know, in terms of uh, we want to do a 4th of July party, you know, who doesn't like the 4th of July? Uh, you know, those are the kinds of things that we want to do here that will help ensure that we can maintain the full season you know, <coughs> when there will be those dips, you know, in the off season. You know, you look at some of these numbers and, you know, it's, it's like, wow, what are you guys thinking? Uh, but, you know, if I were coming in just to do a marina, I would have to have two cars for every boat. That's a requirement to do a marina. You know, and then when, when the ordinances here are set up, they're not set up for an island. You know, we're an island where we feel boaters are gonna wanna come. You know, you're gonna come, you're gonna, your buddy's gonna come up, hey, you know, let's go up here, check out the sunset, grab fish and chips and, you know, hang out, watch the game. Uh, you know, with the basic laws or ordinances as they are in place right now, uh, 
you know, I got to come running out even though I got dock space and say you can't come in because the ordinance only allows 25% of my patrons to be voters, essentially. So the reason that we have the off-site parking was because we felt, you know, it's something the ordinance can allow, which will allow us to be able to have a wedding and not kick everybody out of the restaurant. So um, that's where we go here. But we can run through this uh, development plan. Um, so this is Brian, go ahead. Matt covered a lot of this. This is basically our team. It's in, our, it's in all of our stuff. We've got uh, people we've worked with since the very start with our engineers and architects. We've worked construction engineers for the bridge. We were in, environmental consultants that was based on the wetlands. We worked the DEQ now has already approved the permit, uh, working with the Army Corps to finalize uh, uh, their permit. Requires two, of course. Uh, the map location, I think it's pretty well known where that, where that location's at. Uh, again, on the lake, it's where it exists. Uh, on the lake, it's pretty well known. Uh, the development of it, uh, it's, it was an undeveloped piece of property. It's been used uh, for many years within the family for some, some businesses that were ran there, some storage lots, some rental, some rental shanties off the, off the property, but pretty underutilized probably for the last 20 years or, or longer. The, uh, when we, we showed up at the site, obviously there's a lot of blight uh, concerns. There's old equipment on there. There's shanties. There's we filled probably dumpsters, uh, two 50-yard dumpsters with just trash that we've picked up. And we hired some local guys in the area that helped us out there. And we've been trying to clean up just to get the get the garbage picked up as a starting point. Some of these pictures really don't show how bad as it was, but uh, in in the canal area we see some some docks that are obviously a concern. They're 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 broken down. We've had trees in the canal. I think we've removed four or five fallen trees that were in the canal. Obviously, uh, an issue as far as safety and, and just an eyesore. You can see some of the uh, the docks that have been kind of uh, uh, left in shambles over the years, um, and that's kind of where it sits uh, today. We did some basic repair on a couple of the, the docks that are out there, so we could access it by boat, but they really have been uh, not utilized. Uh, Matt covered the site plan. As you discussed, we're trying to keep everything south. We understand the concern. Uh, our plans are a solid building and, and towards the road and uh, point towards the lake, keep it out of the south, at the north end. Obviously, there's residential in that area. Uh, we've got the parking lot. So really, less than half of this island is uh, requesting for the uh, planning to, to submit. To our understanding, we meet the ordinances uh, of the plan use of C3. Obviously, the concern is the Outdoor, outdoor entertainment, and the things that are outdoor entertainment, and uh, the this is considered outdoor patios and entertainment. Uh, dock was we permitted with the DEQ to to redo the sea walls and docks and put a nice docking all around that facility. Uh, we plan on sign tie you know boats up instead of instead of going out into the canals. Um, I think we propose 185, 85 pilings alone just to, for for dockage. Uh, we we intend to propose to open that south channel up that's not being utilized now. It's a kind of a canal that was once a pond and uh, ideally put some of the uh, a majority, if we can, if the, the, of the uh, patrons of that restaurant up in the boaters up in that area, which is not being utilized or hasn't been in a long time. And then if we will have the back area as, uh, as overflow. Uh, this is just a little close-up of that area. We've added a, a turnaround for valet, a pickup and drop-off area. We've obviously added the landscaping for the, to meet that requirement. We feel that this parking lot is going to be sufficient. We do have room to extend that parking lot down. At this point, we want to really see where the business comes from. We think a majority of our business are going to be from the lake. Uh, with, with the addition of parking is, an, is really is a benefit for patrons that want to come that don't have boat access or lake access. So it's actually a little bit larger. The parking numbers is a concern, but also we, have, we look at numbers that are maxed out. And so to max those numbers out, we really have to intend to have all areas, the pool area, the, the bar, the restaurant, the vendor, vendor one and two at full capacity. Uh, we'll see. I mean, you know, that, that, that is, that those numbers are all obviously done on mass capacities. Uh, layout design, we've talked about a bit, you know, basic layout, uh, our architects here tonight, and we wanted to lay out a real basic concept, kind of use that craftsman feel, uh, steel roof, using, uh, uh, you know, uh, 
a nice layout for, you know, obviously a, a peeling area with garage doors and some opening windows to, to take in that lake view. And obviously, hopefully, enjoy that, that sunset that falls, uh, falls overnight. Uh, layout, Matt already covered this. Uh, we, we added an additional dining space. Uh, we've sealed off the back wall, obviously, try to keep noise directional towards the lake. Um, the door walls are opening it, with the pool area. Uh, we're still working with the DEQ on the pool area. There'll probably be some kind of separation when the pool is closed. They want to be able to, they want to, be able to shut that down. Uh, like in the off season, be a, the pool would be locked up so you couldn't access that area if, if it's closed during the off season. So the, uh, uh, that, that's still, we're still working with them on the design of that. I know Matt did talk about an upgrade to the, the site plan, the plans itself. We did make a small change. We're working with M MDOT now on the change of, of the uh, design. We've spoke with some neighbors adjoining neighbors and how they'd prefer this the entrance and uh, uh, so we we've come to an agreement on the, the way that property should be accessed and we've updated our drawings proposed to MDOT so we have a permit now with MDOT um, and we're waiting for basically the review of that and to set up a meeting with them you know intentionally we want to use that event where one for 10 areas we talked about weddings the sunsets are beautiful over there uh, we, we really see those events uh, that are going on, uh, you know, midday weddings that uh, have the sunset as part of a kind of a, a closing scene for those weddings. Obviously, we understand the noise ordinances over there, and we, we wouldn't exceed those. Um, you know, the pool area would be, a, like we talked about, it's our third phase. We'd want to get the restaurant up up and running and be successful before we worked our, into the, worked our way into that uh, pool area. As far as distance-wise, something we looked at with noise and, and looked at uh, the distance of, of, of locations, you know, from that, that, that restaurant area, kind of this kind of shows the distance, uh, you know, we're roughly about eight to nine hundred, eight to a thousand feet from Stark Drive area. Uh, some of our closest neighbors is probably the C3 residential, or being used as residential, off of... Uh, That's Ed. What's that? That's Ed. Ed's house. Yeah, the closest guy. And then uh, we see there's another residential there that's about 500 feet. Ideally, we're trying to keep the, the noise outside of that area and, and towards the other direction if there is any. And that's the end. So it's just a real quick uh, over, overview. So we're here to probably answer any questions that we can. Well, one of the things I would like to add before that, if I may, um, you know, in terms of the distances from the houses on Stark Drive, um, you know, we are as far as a thousand feet away from some on that canal up here and over here you can look at the distances from the restaurant is uh, 855 feet so basically what you're looking at is an average of about three football fields in terms of distance between where the restaurant is and where their uh, house is um, you know, if someone stood on a goal line on one end and on the other, you know, do three of those, and now I'm facing the other way because the music will be directionally pointed away from the residents. You know, we put this here on a spot for a reason. We wanted to, you know, take our neighbors into effect. Um, we're very conscientious. We want to take care of it. Some neighbors have talked to us, you know, talked to me about you know, well, what happens if, you know, some knucklehead comes by and he's playing his radio too loud or whatnot? You know, I told him basically they're going to have to answer to me. I'm going to be working there. My wife's going to be working there. Brian's going to be there. You know, we're going to be taking care of business. We're not going to allow someone to come in and disrupt what we're doing. Um, you know, we want to make it right. We want to keep it tight. And if someone is causing problems, then they're going to be banned from the island. You know, basically that's it. Okay, thank you very much for your presentation. At this point, we're going to go to the public hearing, or well, it is a public hearing, but to the public's comments. So, there is a sign up sheet in the back that uh, we request that you sign up with your name and address, but anybody can still speak. But at this particular point, I would ask whoever wants to make a public comment, please come up to the podium, state your name and address. Sure, go ahead. Keep in mind the rules that we were already read to you, okay? 
Ronald Pokley, uh, Philip Strive, here since 1974, and proud to be a muskrat. The presenters uh, sound, everything's fine, everyone's gonna get along, everything this and that, it sounds like a big party where everyone lovey-dovey. Well, you know darn well it isn't gonna be that way. I'm concerned, if they love the area so much, leave it the way it is. It's never gonna be the same. Down, I drove down Spark, Stark Road. There's at least four houses on that road that are for sale. Those people uh, are paying taxes. They want to live here. They, they want to retire here. They can die here. And they're, they're being uh, supplanted by money. Uh, also, I'm counting up uh, 450 people here, 160 people here, three, it's almost a thousand people can be there at one time. There's 150 people in this room. Can you imagine a thousand people there uh, with the noise? Uh, the people on Phillips Drive and uh, uh, Farnsworth did not receive any notification of this meeting until last week. That's right. terrible. Um, I want to know about the boats. How big a boat are you going to allow? Uh, I, I, I realize uh, being on the water, the bigger the boat, the bigger the jerk. I'm worried about, <laughs> I, I, I'm worried about the, uh, the weight. People are kayaking there. People are swimming there. People have smaller boats. Uh, I, I, I suggest you, you keep the size to, if this goes through, 24 feet maximum. Uh, how about the sewage? A thousand people, sewage there, can we handle that without extra, without extra facilities and water and police? I think we've got to take care of all that. Where are they going to get the dredgings? Are they going to take it from the lake? Are they going to have a dredge out as a channel so those boats can come in? Is, is that uh, area going to be disturbed? Um, da 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 da. Okay. Uh, we're worried about the noise level. We're talking about bands. It, it travels a long way on the water. Uh, and uh, 800 feet is really nothing uh, to the people that live there. Uh, okay. All right, that's it. I'll give up my time to other people. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. All right, excuse me. The other, I'm gonna go with this gentleman. Hold on one second. Yes, there we go. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, you. Thank you. You're welcome. How's everybody? Please state your name and address. My name is James Jakubowski. I live at 7402 Dyke Road. That's right next to the bridge on M29. I'm directly across from Rose Marine. I received this letter three or four weeks, three weeks ago, three weeks ago. I have 17 cousins that live on the next two canals behind me that received nothing, nothing. On Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I can't pull out of my drive. I wait 20, 30 minutes sometimes to pull out of my drive. The traffic is so bad. If you look up the accidents that have occurred from Anchor Bay Drive to Steyer Road, right. it's terrible. It's very terrible. My problem is, I have a question for all of you. Would you like Javi Nooner in your backyard every day of the week? My dogs have been beat, hit with rocks, shot in the face by city people. My, my yard, I don't buy. I don't buy any mulch. I don't have to. No one in my house smokes. My whole landscape is nothing but cigarette butts. I pick up dirty needles and beer cans on my lawn every day next to that bridge. My kids have never been allowed to go up and get the mail or take the garbage out. They learned to ride bikes at Fairhaven Elementary. I had to put them in a car. They're not allowed in my front yard because of all the traffic and danger. And you want to bring more? You want to have a shuttle? Go from Plagan's place to, to there? Come on, people. Let's wake up. Would you want this in your yard? Who would want this in their yard? 
Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next. We're going to call back and forth. I'll take one. I'll take you. We'll just keep going back and forth. Just try to keep some. My name's Tony Kotrowski. I live on Lake Drive <coughs> off of Dyke Road. I have a couple questions. I'd like to reiterate what he said about the traffic, getting up, in and out of, off the road. On the weekends, we have a saying, stock up for the weekends because you can't get in and out of, off of, of uh, the Dyke Road. And as far as the, the access, it's going to be over the bridge that goes to St. John's Marsh. And if you try to pull out there, you're not gonna see, it's gonna hard to see cars coming from the north going south because of that bridge. That's a fact. And one other point, are you gonna, you gonna have liquor at your restaurant? Sir, 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 you have to address your comments to me, okay? Don't address them to your applicant. Okay, okay. Thank you. Now, you're gonna have traffic going from the restaurant to the public, to the access uh, for parking, right? Don't tell me if people have been drinking, they're gonna start walking. Okay, at nighttime, you will not be able to see these people walking. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dan Sinclair Smith. I live at uh, 7317 B Lane. And um, there are some issues that came to my mind about this project is uh, one being the water levels. I kayak past that island a lot because I go out that way. That's the way I go to get to the lake, is right past that island. And I noticed, uh, like, before the level water level came up about six inches just recently, it was about the ground there on that island was about two feet above the water level. So, you know, whatever is getting built, they better build on stilts, I would say, if you can do that. And uh, also then, like, remember back in 2000 to, to 2005 how low the water level dropped? Just keep that in mind when you're d uh, dredging those ditches for the boats because you got to dig extra deep. A lot of people may not be able to fit the next time the cycle brings the water back down. And uh, another issue I was thinking about were mosquitoes. Those mosquitoes, they, around that area, they come out in clouds. And when you swat them, you can feel their body weight. You know, they... <laughs> They are serious about getting every bit of your blood they can. And so, you know, they better think about that kind of stuff because that'll drive away customers, you know, if you don't get rid of the mosquitoes. And then you get re getting rid of the mosquitoes, what does that entail? S spraying poison, you know? So it's just some issues that I thought about, you know, with the water levels, mosquitoes. And, you know, it is a small island. I, the numbers that they're talking about is pretty steep for me to, you know. I'm not an engineer. I worked with a few, though, but, you know, it's, it, it's a tall order to make happen what they're talking about. But Thank you. All right. Mr. Gendron, where are you at? Yeah, go ahead. Good e <coughs> Excuse me. Good evening. My name is Gary Yenernelik. I'm an attorney. I was just retained yesterday by some of the property owners in this particular neighborhood. If I had been retained earlier, I would give you a, a written summary as to their concerns and some of their oppositions to it. But I did receive from your office, because I was here uh, yesterday, their updated plan. And part of their presentation, they made reference that supposedly that they had an MDQ permit, but then another time they said, well, they're still waiting for some MDQ permits. But 
in planning a special land use, especially when you're on the water, you have to take into consideration the MDQ permits as to dredging, filling, and the core permits as to the same. The, uh, and until they have those permits, and quite often the MDQ and the core, especially on a bigger projects, schedules a public hearing, and quite often it's in the community where the property is located, because I've done many developments in Chesterfield and we had the public hearings at that facility. The, uh, they don't really say that they have it. In one of their drafts, they have a proposed permit together, but if you look real close, it says draft. It doesn't say that it was issued by the MDQ. So obviously I'm gonna be in contact with the MDQ and the core as to our concerns. The other thing that they mentioned, and the planner mentioned that they have this offsite parking at the, I think it's called Sunset Bay now, it used to be the piers, but in your ordinance, and I read that yesterday, and I couldn't give you the specific site, but it's in there. You can have off-site parking in a lot of communities like Chesterfield and New Baltimore, and your ordinance says, but it has to be within 300, 300 feet of the location. Well, their own documents say it's about a quarter of a mile to a half mile away, so it doesn't meet that requirement, so it seems to me that you can't give them a special land use permit because they don't meet that criteria. And they're way over as to, or way under, depending on how you look at it, as to the number of parking spaces that they want you to waive. The, uh, and then in that uh, drawing they have, if you drive by that facility, I drove by there and stopped in on the way here, there's boats parked there now, and there's boats and cars parked there because it's an active marina, that that marina, and it's changed hands a few times over the years, they've used more and more of that as a parking facility, so they have to have some like exclusive agreement that you have to approve with in conjunction with that site plan that says there's always going to be designated parking for this operation if you allow it when it's more than 300 feet away. The other concern and some of the other people mentioned it, is that the, uh, coming in and out of there, they have a narrow piece of property that I think is between 50 and 75 feet wide. A couple years ago in Ira Township, they approved that Dollar General store, and they made that facility build a bypass lane and a taper lane. Well, when you come out of Bill Rose's place, which is just to the west of this, when you look to the left, you have a hard short sight distance because there's the bridge abutment, but there's a long guardrail. And you have to have the guardrail in place so that if people run off the road, they don't instantly hit the concrete. And it seems to me that before your group approves anything, that you have to see an approved MDOT permit for their driveway approach. And I've represented many developers, and when we have a proposed project, you can go to MDOT and you can get a preliminary approval on your proposed driveway approach, and if they want to make changes, they mark it in red and say, like in one situation, my guy's driveway approach was 25 feet wide with a 50-foot taper. They said, we'll approve your site, a 30-foot wide opening with a 75-foot taper. They marked it on there, and the local community approved it. But they have jurisdiction over the road, not the township. Um, my one contact did take these photographs and I'll give these to you because it is a significant nature. Do you mind if I approach you? That's okay. The, uh, it's okay to approach. Yes, it is. <laughs> so I I'm show sure. some, you know, angles flying in the neighborhood, and then this is from some of the papers uh, right up their backyard, showing the blue heron, and here's an eagle in the tree, and. This is kind of what it looks like in the summertime, you know, Munchies Bay or Bouvier Bay. Uh, so there's a lot of activity that's already there. This shows, this shows like the high water. And in conjunction with this, there's a lot of hazards to navigation in there because of the fact that there was old seawalls and boat docks. This is the narrow approach into the facility. I think one of their engineers said that their bridge would hold 30 to 40,000. A lot of communities say if you build a bridge, it has to hold 80,000. 
pounds so that the fire truck, which loaded with water, can get across safely. Even though this bridge doesn't span very far, here's the bridge. The, uh, and one of the issues, too, is with reference to your group and the Corps, if they allow them to dredge, it's going to impact these people's seawall on Stark Drive because a lot of their sheetings are only 8, 12 feet deep. And even if you dredge off, the underground water or land will slowly seep away in their... Uh, I'm just going to let you know your time is off, so if you can <laughs> well, wrap it up. I hope we have a few people, so no, maybe say, it's we gave better you some, for no, me to no, talk. No, 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 we gave you six minutes, and that's what the um, rules we read at the beginning, six right. minutes per group, and we gave you the, you're over six minutes, which is fine, so that's why I didn't say come to a good conclusion here. <laughs> Well, my conclusion is this, that at this stage, they didn't address the eight standards. They just put the eight standards in the back of their document. Mm -hmm. Like your planner said, he read them, but they don't have a written response saying how they meet your standards. So I think until they do that, you can't approve it, and for all those other reasons. So I'd suggest that, you know, at the conclusion of tonight's session, that you continue the public hearing so people can speak in the future but it be postponed to sometime in June and July so that if they do submit a revised plan, people have an opportunity to come here and look at the full-size plan and make their comments either again in, in person or by writing. I think. I'm going to hand you back your pictures. Thank you. Mark. No, you can keep those you for sure? the record. You can put those because okay. I have a copy. You can put those in the file. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. from the audience who would like to approach and make a comment and just keep in mind that um, at this point we've if you're repeating the same thing we've already heard we're, we get the general idea so when you come to the podium just again state your name and address and we'll go from there who would like to hold on <laughs> how about we do this one and then we'll go to you next okay oh he's going the other way okay we'll take you let's go we'll do that Joe Vance Mays, 911 at 7237 Blueville. A few comments I have to make is mainly uh, the fire department going across that bridge with a truck. Uh, as far as I can tell, that's a one lane bridge. How are you going to handle getting fire trucks across there going in when you get panicky people trying to get out? And once the truck is in there, is there going to be enough land there for the truck to maneuver? That's emergency type stuff. The other thing is I hear all this talk about keeping the noise down. And they're only 1,000 feet away this house and 300 feet from this house. Well, I live on Blueville, and I hear the Algonac High School band when they practice at night. That's all I got to say. At this moment, I'm going to take just a quick break. I forgot to have one letter that we did receive in the um, packet, and we're going to read that into the record, and then we'll continue. I received the above notice in the mail as I am within 300 feet of the property. However, many of you may not be aware of this. I am against the blanket approval of this application for several reasons. In addition to their plan for a restaurant, outdoor pool area and tents is for 100-plus boat slips and up to 1,200 people plus staff. They would like to turn it into a Putin Bay like de destination area. The entrance to the island is from a two lane major highway across a narrow bridge. There is no room for a turn lane either into or out of the driveway. The road is already extremely busy and the additional traffic would create a hazard. We already have 200 to 300 boats in our bay each weekend, but when the sun goes down, most of the boats leave and the area becomes quiet again. If the island is allowed to have outdoor entertainment, it would deprive us of being able to enjoy the use of our property. There are also rumors of a proposed hotel on the north end of the island, which would interrupt the view of all the homeowners along Stark Drive and Dyke Road. We all know what the reputation of Put-in Bay is. Do we want our area, which borders on St. John's Marsh, to become that? We live here to enjoy the 3,000 plus acres of marshland and wildlife. Lake St. Clair already has Gull Island with its annual Jobby Nooner celebration on the other side of our lake, which brings us enough bad publicity. We don't need another location so near our homes. Signed, Jerry Shiloff. And 
he gives us his email address. Thank you. All right, anybody else in the public who would like to come forward and make a comment? We'll go this way. You're welcome. Uh, Catherine Ego, uh, 7411 Dyke Road. Um, and uh, my view is that um, I think everybody has the same vision for Clay Township, um, that we want to be ecologically sensitive and also economically viable. Um, unlike Putin Bay, I've done a lot of work in Charlevoix, and I, when I see the area, I really feel that, um, that everybody loves it, but uh, there's, there's a good balance there. And I, um, I'm really happy that there's this open dialogue that we can hear everybody's concerns. Um, but when I was looking at the recreation plan, um, some of the goals were to have a quality of life through social, intellectual, physical, emotional, and um, interactions and development. And so one of the things with a community, right, is that tourism, um, there's reports from 2016 on tourism and eco, um, ecotourism. Um, it does generate uh, um, an influx, but it's also positive for the economy. It's positive for the, the, the homeowners um, financially. And what I can hear, you know, being here is that there's a lot of um, fear of change, right? And um, when you look at the change curve, the first thing is denial and fear. And, and a lot of the things um, with a proposal, like I, I think that they're talking about, um, you know, taking out the Phragmites and putting in, um, you know, the the actual natural species of flowers. Um, so it would be beautiful, um, you know, around the, the, the curve there. Um, but from a problem solving aspect, we would be able to solve those, right? So there's a lot of things that are brought up, but, you know, together we can overcome that, right, as a community and as a business. Um, I understand, you know, when you go to Birmingham, you know, there's different communities and it's like, what does your community want to look like and what is the vision? Um, and, and how does that, that look together between, you know, the residents and, and the business owners? So, um, you know, as a business owner, I want to, you know, I want to be a, I want to be an asset to the community as well. Um, you know, I, you know, try to clean up and uh, sometimes it doesn't go as expected. Um, I can definitely say that. Um, but, you know, with the opportunity, like I say, with open dialogue, I think that, um, you know, this would be, would actually be a benefit. Um, so that's my, my Thank comment. Thank you. Thanks. Any other comments? Gentleman on the end right here, blue hat. My name is Jeff Watson. I live at 7315 Riverside. Uh, question, they keep mentioning transient wells. It's not going to be a marina and that 25% of their parking will should be dismissed due to the boaters that'll be coming in, they won't be using cars. Now, usually there's restaurant docking, but they're not called transient wells. Is there gonna be overnight docking there? If there's overnight docking there, everyone knows it's a boater. Wife comes after work, the husband takes the boat, there's another car for that thing. So now you're not minusing 25%, you're adding 25% out of the capacity of the parking there and they're already over their parking. Now, it's overnight stay. Hey, I'm going out Saturday morning, Sunday morning. The buddies, the girlfriends, everyone else, they're all bringing their cars out because now it's a quick place to stop in, park, jump in the boat, head out that way because it's closer to home than going all the way back to the marina. So you're at, the boats are actually adding more parking problems and more traffic and everything if it's overnight staying and it's transient wells. And if you're doing that, now it's a marina. It's not just rafting boats off to have dinner. It's an actual whole marina. And that's just something to put in your head to think about when you're discussing the transient wells versus just docking for the restaurant. Thank, Thank you. My name's Lawrence Pronick, 7889 Lake Drive. I am one canal over from this place. 
During the summer, Munchies Bay, they party, they scream, they yell. We can hear their voices in our houses when they're partying. Those people are still going to come to Munchie Bay when that's a restaurant. Now you're going to have four or 500 boats. When the water goes low, those boats are going to get way out. And what they do is they come, they block all the canals. They don't care where they park. They bring their big boats, come over there. So they're all over the place. We're going to have a problem. The parking lot, is that they own that parking lot? Or is that rented, leased? And if they lose their rental agreement, where do those cars park? And the drainage for that parking lot. So the noise, I'm several football fields away and I can hear it without a band. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Diane Miller, 7311 B Lane. And um, I have a couple of uh, comments. Um, if they're gonna provide valet parking back and forth on that road, you're gonna add additional cars running up and down that road that MDOT needs to consider as well. Because how are the valets gonna get back and forth to this valet parking lot down the road? I have a heck of a time getting out of Steyer Road on weekends, like some other people have said. You just don't go out. You pack up, you get your stuff for the weekend, and you just don't go out on the road on the weekends. Um, the other thing is um, they didn't say anything about the distance, the total distance of this facility to us that live in the Steyer sub. We're just as close that live across M29 as some of these people that are on Stark and Lake. And the other thing is, is that I would like to be notified by the board when things like this are going on this close to our neighborhood. And I'm, the only way I found out about this was through the Nextdoor app. Otherwise, I wouldn't have even known that this was going on. And I think that at where I live is in close enough proximity to this that all of us on B Lane, Ed Lane, and Joe Char, we should have all been notified of this. I understand this goes back to October of last year when this started, and we knew nothing about it. So I would like to request that we get notification of future meetings in regards to this project. Um, noise levels are a concern. Um, two doors down from me, three doors down from me, there's a band that plays in their garage and the noise, they're talking about facing the noise towards the lake. It doesn't matter. The noise is going to come back across. It's not going to just go out to the lake and not come across M29. And if they're going to be playing music until 2 o'clock in the morning, like the regular bar restaurants places do, that's going to add a whole lot of noise to our neighborhood. And I am totally against this type of project. I'd like to see something like a Belle Isle Park where people can come and bicycle around the area, have a nice nature area. Give those of us that live at that end of uh, Clay Township some kind of facilities, playgrounds for our kids, biking, rollerblading, uh, a place where boaters can come up, fly kites, do normal kid stuff in that area. There's nothing for the kids in that area. <laughs> Oh, the woman, I'm sorry, the lady behind you. Good evening, my name's Melanie yeah. Lavati, and I'm, I have a property at 8825 North Channel Highway. Um, thank you everybody for showing up. You know, everybody in this room loves this community, okay? My family came here to this area in 1870. My maiden name was Vermeulen. My father is, was an entrepreneur. He made his living in this community for years. Okay, this island was originally owned by the Lipinskis. It was, it was an area where they had their business. Um, excuse me, I'm nervous. I don't like public speaking. Uh, but the Lipinski family had a fishery here. They also had a dance hall here. My point is, when my family came here in 1870, nothing existed. None of you people lived here. Most of your family didn't live here. And things changed. It constantly changes and evolves. And what I'd like to see happen is 
this development or any development work with the people in the community? Because after all, we all live here. We all want to get along. We all want commerce. We all want this community to, to thrive. And I think that the frustration that I sense here is just that they don't want change. You know, the township had the opportunity when this was listed to buy this property for exactly yes. the purpose that you said. With what money? With money from the state. No. Ma'am, hold on. Please yes. Please your comments to me. So, at the, end of, at the end of the day, they opted not to do it because they had other intentions of having a, a swimming area, a beachfront area. This would have been ideal for that, but that didn't happen. Okay, now you have somebody who wants to invest potentially millions of dollars into this community. They don't want to be set up for failure. That's why they're here and they want to work with people. So, you know, take it for what it is, but I think everybody has the same goal in mind. Thank, Thank you. you. My name is Greg Ashman. I live on Bayview Shore Drive. My concern is actually three points. One is, if we add this to the community, I live off of Bayview Shore Drive, which basically enters into Anchor Bay Drive, then goes into M29. On the weekends, when all that traffic is making its way, migration to go see the beauty of the lake, which is great, it is so difficult and dangerous for us to get onto M29. Just at that light alone, to add that on there, you're gonna have to put a traffic light there. And the concern I have is that my daughter, who is not the greatest driver, she's 16 <laughs> years old, and many of the other people in the community, they fear going out during the weekend. So that's definitely a concern of mine. Point two, what are we thinking about us who live adjacent to this property? Because I know myself, I've learned this the hard way. When an event shows up, I get people that park up and down my street and seem to use my yard as an entrance onto the lake. And I've got to sit there and play policeman all the time to say, hey, dude, you, you know, could you park over here? Or could you, you know, at least give me a little uh, courtesy about, you know, I understand you want to go out and have fun with your friends on the boat. But at the same token, I understand what these men are trying to do, and I respect it. But they're not looking at what it's going to do to the community and the people that here live here that have pay that money for that little sanctity that we bought alongside the water. It will be destroyed, not just on our traffic issues, but also within our community for the people that are going to show up and try to get involved in that party. Because maybe they can't get there by boat, but they can get there by kayak, or they can swim to a boat. I see it every day, every weekend. Point three is, you know, they're asking for a dredging permit, and I know this myself. It's easy to get it when you got high water. They would be having a very difficult time if we were in low-level situations like we were in 1999 and 2000. They don't give them away easily. Right now, God bless their soul, they're picking a great time to walk in and talk to the DEQ and walk in and talk to the Army Corps. However, if this was a different time, their, their ability to get this through would probably not happen because there will be a lot of dredging for that to actually work. I know that. I live in the community. I know that area well. That's all I got to say. Thank you. This gentleman? He has been. I'm trying. <laughs> Hi, my name's Scott Walgrave. I live at 7873 Stark Drive. Um, I'm kind of nervous, along with everybody else. Um, you know, with this phase two, even phase one, with uh, the uh, seawall running down the canal, there's not sufficient room for a 40-foot, 50-foot boat to park on that side and me park on my side and still have thorough way for other boats. People that live back on Steer Drive in that neighborhood back there will never see that lake again. There's just no, there's no way to turn around a boat. There's a lady here. She lives down at the end, right by uh, Wally's place, the Great Lakes Socks and Decks. That's where all these big boats are gonna have to be turning around. And with the water up so high, it's not gonna help, but water's gonna be splashing over seawalls with all the boats docked up and down the seawalls, everyone that bought a house in Stark Drive is now gonna lose their view. What we worked for to save for and live at will be taken away from us. 
And I don't think that's fair. That's all I've got to say. Thank you. Thank you. All right, anyone else who we haven't heard the comments are ready from? Gentlemen in the very back, I'll go to you next, okay? You know, can I use this form to ask questions? I'm sorry? Can I use the form to ask questions? No, you can make comments. Okay, that's fine. You can make... Go ahead. You can, excuse me, let me let me rephrase him. You can ask the chair a question if that's what you're trying to do. And let him go first, okay? Hi, my name is Larry Shivers. I live at 7770 Farnsworth. And when I look out my back door, I can see the island. So, uh, got a few things here. Some of it's kind of related to what they were saying. Uh, you know, this deep water's a cycle. It's gonna get shallow again, and you're gonna have to dredge again. You know, it's, right now if you dredge another six years, eight years, you're gonna have to dredge again. Um, being so close to the marsh, St. John's Marsh, it's a protected area. And if you look at that island, it looks like St. John's Marsh, which I also think should be protected. I'd like to think about maybe having some kind of report done by the DEQ to see what they think about the long-term effects it might have on, on the eagles and on the fish and on the birds and all that kind of stuff. Um, I, just, I just feel that if this happens, it's a big project, and this area just can't support it, and I feel it'll change our quality of life. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, my last name is Hannah, 7931 Stark. And, you know, I just have a question. I saw diagrams earlier on of low level and high water levels in the island. And what is the plan based on? Is it based on low water levels or high water levels? In other words, what land mass actually makes this up? Do you have any GPS coordinates showing where the buildings will be? You know, what I saw from the plans is that there would be dredging all around the canals. Well, do you know, are they increasing the width? Are they decreasing the width? Do you guys have any idea what they're actually proposing in terms of GPS coordinates, where the buildings will be located, if they're going to put riffraff, how far will it come out? Are they going to increase the size of the island? Are they going to keep it the same? Do you have any idea? Is that in the plan? Are you it considering it? I'm sorry, what was the last part? Yeah, is it in the plan? And the reason why I'm asking that is, as the prior gentleman said, and the people that are living along those canals, they're proposing 105 boat slips. Now, some of it will be, you know, on this side, some that side, et cetera. Well, it's a heck of a lot of boats, and there's not a lot of room. So what are they proposing to do, actually, in terms of GPS coordinates? Where's the building going to be? How far out will the riffraff come? Are they going to stand? What are they going to do? Do you know that? Our planners can help me with this, but I know the applicant's been working with the Army Corps and all the people to NDEQ to get all their permits and everything. I don't know if we've actually seen any of that. I, I don't know how anybody can approve any plan on the water without knowing that, and especially the DEQ. How could, you, how could the DEQ approve that? I can't speak for them. <clears throat> We're gathering information at this point. It's a valid question. We don't actually have an answer at this particular point. Okay, I, I would just recommend, you know, the board don't approve anything until okay. you know exactly what's going to be done. DEQ or not, it, you know, it doesn't matter. It's your, it's your decision as well, and it impacts all of us. And I can't, I can't envision, you know, you have, as people, it's two to three hundred boats here in the summertime. Mm -hmm. Add another hundred and five coming around these canals and around this island. I can't even see that. And I guess in terms of the noise, I would only say you can have boats out here playing their, their radios fairly loud. You will hear it halfway across the lake. Your noise ordinance is 11 p.m. That means live music till 11 p.m. at night. But they go all night. So you really, you really need to consider that for the residents as well. And I think a prime example of that would probably be the Tin Fish restaurant down in Ira that had the same issues. 
So, but I, I would strongly recommend you get GPS cords. You know exactly where everything's going to be. If they plan on extending the island, that's <coughs> what they plan on doing before you prove anything. Thank you. Appreciate your comments. <laughs> Any other members of the audience? The, one, the lady right there. Hi, my name's Carol Rosen. I live at 7913 Stark Drive. And I understand what they're talking about, how much they love the area, how beautiful it is. They don't even know the name of the waterway they bought on. That is not a canal. That is called Bovier Creek. It runs from Anchor Bay all the way to the North Channel, and from the North Channel, it meanders its way back down out to the mouth of Anchor Bay. So everything that they're talking about, there is no way that they cannot tremendously impact that creek without to do the project that they want to do. It cannot physically be done. And for us to sit here in this township and say that we have a right to change that creek without asking everybody that's affected by that creek, which is a main thoroughfare for over 100 families that live east of M29, what are those 100 families supposed to do when their weekend comes they can't even get out? Think about it, and please learn where you live. Anyone else? And yet? Hello, good evening. Uh, my name is Kelly Zimborski. I live at a 211 William on Harsons Island. So I think I'm the first person outside of the immediate quadrant to come up and have a conversation from Clay Township. I'm not representing Harsons Island, but it's just a different viewpoint that we haven't talked about. I'm going to talk about three things that nobody's talked about here tonight, okay? And these are all positive things because I support what is going on in my community. I've had a uh, family place on Harsons Island since before I was born, and I bought my own house September of 2012, so I've now been a resident out here for seven and a half years myself. I own two businesses in this community. One is Clean Marine. It is a boat cleaning company that takes care of many familiar faces here, as well as a million people that go from Algonac all the way to Detroit. So I'm well versed on this lake, just like everybody else's. My heart is this lake. I make my money off this lake. This lake is my lifestyle is everything to me, okay? So I want to preserve everything that every single person here has to as well. But I want to talk about something that's very important to me as a younger person in this community, okay? And that is longevity. When you look out and see what we have in Algonac, I see no tourism, no destination, nothing that makes me want to go have a date night somewhere. Do I want to go to Marine City and go check out their downtown? Sure. Do I want to go to St. Clair and check out their downtown? Sure. Would I want to drive to Port Huron so there's different restaurants and something to go do and see? Yes. What do I have in Algonac other than a Jets, a gym, a Dollar General, a Family General, you know, like all the little stores and that's it. But there's nowhere to go. Okay, I'm not just going to go to Catch-22. I want something to go to, to enjoy. I want something to be proud of, to talk about in Algonac, something that we can do all the time and to be proud of, okay? I live here and I want something to be proud of. Ma'am, ma'am, and people, excuse okay. me, ma'am, at okay. the podium. Very well. Okay, let's talk about the podium. Ma'am, at the podium. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. You need to address your comments towards me, not the audience. Okay. And um, audience members, please be respectful. Sure. Let her make her comments. Okay. Thank you. Something else that, that I see on my ride to and from home every day in the wintertime, which is something we haven't discussed around here, is snowmobile traffic. I see so many snowmobiles going up and down. This is something that the snowmobiles can pull up to and go and do outside of by the raft and outside of by the DNR site that's over by Bobby Max and go and enjoy something as well. So I see there being 
more jobs and tourism and destination outside of the three months of the year. I see it actually being another season of two or three months of the year. I see the duck hunters in the fall coming to enjoy a meal there. I see it being something that could withstand in this community more than the three months. And I see other means of transportation coming in other than boats and cars. You see dirt bikes, golf carts, snowmobiles. I see a lot of other options here. And I just want everybody to keep an open mind. I mean, I know everybody doesn't like change here, but you, there has to be some change at some point. Just a little bit. And that's it, that's all I want to say. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else in the audience? Let's jump on in. My, my name is John Stack. I live at 7230 Bayview Shores. I'd like to make a couple of comments. First of all, there's comments made about how there's no destination here. Uh, check me if I'm wrong, but there's a tiki bar that's opening in May over by the Yellow Wall Seawall. So that adds to the business. There's plenty of things to do here already. The concerns we have as residents is the impact it's gonna have both on the environment and on the traffic. We're concerned about the roads being able to handle it. If you look in aerial view, I struggle to see how these roads could handle uh, that kind of additional traffic. Um, the safety of it uh, for the residents, uh, and then of course the noise. Thank you, that's all I gotta say. Thank you. Anyone else in the audience? Gentleman in the very back, on the right. Right, yep, you. You can be next, okay. Hello, my name is uh, George Coulson, uh, 7352 Adelaide Road. I just got a couple of quick things to think about. When you go out to your backyard and you go out on the water and you want to read a book or you're relaxing for the evening, having a soda or a beer or whatever, and you're listening to those frogs, crickets, birds, um, with 600 people listening to a bunch of music probably most of us don't want to listen to anyway. That's done. The calm evenings are done. And um, that's all I really have to say about that. Uh, you folks represent us. We're your constituents. Um, I don't think many people really want this, but uh, I think it's important enough. It's so huge that maybe there ought to be an actual community vote it's important. Gentleman in the back. Good evening. PJ Harrison. I I'm no longer a resident, but I was a resident. I used to live right next to the gentleman on the corner by the bridge right across from Rose Marine. Um, it was my choice to leave because of the traffic. Um, I used to work for Wally at Great Lakes Docks, so I'm very familiar with the canal. I was the one that probably spent the most time cleaning the canal. So um, I also purchased Art's boat with the help of Bill Rose. Um, so I'm very familiar with what Bill's been doing over there. He's doing a great job. Um, I'm a patron of the area. Now I live in Algonac um, as, a, as a former resident. Um, I'm very aware. I moved away from that before I had children. I have three kids. I agree with the gentleman that left earlier about the, the safety issue of the bridge, the viewing, the traffic. Um, it's, it's a long time issue. Um, I, as, as a resident and a, a community member, I I would like to see the vision of the township work with the gentleman to not only give him an opportunity um, to present and solve some of the issues, maybe work with some of the problems that are going on as far as the traffic, whether he goes in or not, the traffic <laughs> is an issue. The bridge is an, it's, it's an issue. I was also involved in a car accident right on that bridge probably eight or nine years ago because of the viewing. Um, uh, with that being said, as a entrepreneur and a former or a future business owner, I was driven out of the area because of zoning issues and things that were going on in the area. 
Um, I'm a resident of Algonac now, and I was forced to move and buy property all the way up in Marine City. Um, I think that the people have a very, very good concern, very many concerns, um, but I think with a combination of the community's efforts and the investors' efforts, we could utilize this and possibly solve some of those concerns as far as the traffic, the bridge. Um, whether he goes in or not, I think that's something that needs to be addressed with MDOT, with other businesses in the area. I don't know if there's record of anything happening with Bill. Bill is a great guy. He's done a great job over there. Um, everybody's aware of the traffic on the shoulders, business-related, pedestrians, fishermen, people on the bridge, all the way down the whole marsh. Um, I see this as, a, as an opportunity, like the other lady said, to to bring in some people, bring in some tourism. It's it's not an immediate, everybody dumps this money into it and it's <coughs> gonna bring a million people every day. I I don't like to be negative. I don't, I don't foresee it being a Monday through Sunday all night party. There's other area restaurants, there's, there's always been bars. There's always gonna be issues with people walking, even if there's policing. Okay, your time's up. So if you wanna wrap it up, please. Sure, I just, I would like to see the community invite, if they're against the idea, invite the opportunity and the, the options, along with the vision of the township, to work together and possibly solve some of those safety issues and maybe see a little bit of, uh, of growth. Thank you, Thank appreciate you. it. Anyone else? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, then it's you. <laughs> Good evening. My name's Penny Walgreave. I live at 7873 Stark Drive. And one of my big issues is safety. I have kindly asked boaters to slow down going down Bouvier Creek, and we have had blow darts blowing at our house, stuck in our roof, just inches away from my windows. When you've got this kind of, this amount of people coming to a small area, you're going to have people coming on my property or other people's property you're going to have people from the city with concealed weapons. What's gonna happen when a fight breaks out in that, tea, in that bar and three people pull a gun and one comes through my house? I'm not ready for it. And I vote no on this project for my safety and everybody else's safety in the community. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing no hands, we appreciate everybody who's been here tonight. Um, the public hearing part of this will be now closed at 9.01. Unless we have the planner who's giving me a little heads up here, so <laughs> not quite yet. Just a, a suggestion for consideration. You've had a lot of people here who've come to speak, and uh, based on information that's been discussed, there will likely be additional information that's going to come before you because clearly you're not gonna be able to act because you know you have to look at additional information before making a decision. You have a couple choices with the public hearing. Um, you can close it now, or you could choose to leave it open, um, which would basically allow people to speak again at, a, at another meeting when additional information is available. Uh, if you postpone to a date certain, um, you can leave the public hearing open and people can speak and it doesn't have to be re-noticed. Um, so something to keep in mind, if you don't postpone to a date certain 
and you want to have additional uh, an additional public hearing, you would have to re-notice again. But you do have the option of postponing to a date certain and leaving the public hearing open so that people can speak at a later date when more information is presented. Or you can close the public hearing. It's, it's your decision, but I wanted to give you the various oh, options that. so that you're aware of that before you actually close the public hearing. Postpone to 2050. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're not going to do that from the audience, please. Thank you. Um, I'm then going to. Just a, a thought, Madam Chair. Yes. If we, considering the some of the comments regarding lack of notification. If we do postpone it and there is no notification, that might not be a good thing. I would suggest closing it and then re-notifying. But I believe the notification was done pursuant to what the requirements are. It was okay. um, the by the what, what we're required to do, and there's a whole list. If in the is it 300 feet? Correct. The project, and it was at the project of both where the restaurant that site is and the proposed or not. Proposed no, just park. just the the island just the island okay because that's where the actual activity okay. is proposed um, so we did do that part correctly as far as I know yes that's as that's far been as I know. yes Matt's shaking his head yes also <laughs> so so you yeah you've met your statutory and we also put it in the newspaper and correct and on the website for Clay Township correct so people can check that and get the information as far as What's happening with this project? Correct. So, what would the planning commission members like to do? Say leave it open. Well, we, we need a date. Thought. I'm sorry, but we need to have a date certain. Correct. Madam Correct. Chair. So, okay. hold on a second. Go ahead. Um, it's my understanding that we have another review that planners need to look at. Right. There was another submittal plan. that was made. Um, and, there, and those are due to you by Friday. If they want to get on for the the for, the, May. The, the for May, however, there's a couple things to keep in mind, and this may also impact your decision. As Matt mentioned, and as the applicant mentioned, there's other outstanding permits, DEQ and Army Corps. So, uh, I have not seen any permits issued. I've seen applications, but I have not seen that there's been a permit issued. Um, I heard the applicant say a, a DEQ permit has been issued. So I think that needs to be provided so that you can review exactly what the permit is. Um, that information should be actually provided, the actual permit um, that's been issued, if in fact a permit has been issued, so it can be reviewed. Um, same thing for Army Corps. Uh, those permits should be provided so that you can understand what's being permitted. Um, the other question that we raised is whether or not your ordinance allows you to require a traffic study if that's a concern. So if in fact you think you need one, then this would be a good time to let the applicant know that you want to see one. If you don't think, if you just want to um, see whatever the permitting process does, that's your choice too. But I just want to bring that to your attention that if you do want to require one, that typically that's, uh, that takes a little bit to be done and it would be fair to let the applicant know that you want one so that that can they're going to have to get a uh, pre-qualified traffic consultant that's that MDOT's going to accept and they'll have to address the the township's requirements as well as as well as MDOT's requirements for for a traffic study so that would be a good thing to talk about whether or not you think that's something you want to see as part of that decision making process um, and then we have uh, obviously the new submittal. So there's a lot of information that's still coming. Um, based on what I'm hearing, this is likely not going to be ready for that next meeting. It's going to be probably the following month. Um, that's, that is, I mean, I think that's a, kind of the common sense test when you put all those pieces together. I, I really don't think everything's going to be in order so that you're going to be able to make that next meeting. I think it's probably more realistic to wait until June. So that's that's my suggestion, that if you're going to postpone to a date certain, it would be to your regular meeting in June. Well, Madam Chair. <laughs> yeah, I, think I was going to just ask that. I would think just given all of our questions and thoughts from the previous meetings that we've had on this project 
along with, and along with all the community. comments from tonight that traffic study is definitely an issue that needs to be addressed. Does that also include all traffic? I'm sorry. Does that also include like a boat traffic? Because I see the Army Corps of Engineers is concerned about the increase mm -hmm. in boat traffic. Oh, it, it can absolutely. Um, they, they and particularly since there's so many boats that are proposed to come, that could be part of the study where the the, the forecasts are made for not only vehicular traffic, and for the um, the valet traffic plus boat traffic. All of that would could be included in a traffic impact study. Absolutely. I would think that would be. A good idea. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's reasonable to, you know, certainly consider the boat traffic if you're if there's a concern about that, so you understand what the potential is. Let them pay for it. Um. Okay. So if we're looking towards those items and to keep the public hearing open versus closing it, we have to do it to a date certain. Correct. correct? Postpone to a date certain and request additional information. So if you want. Additional information you've got. So what, what I've heard tonight is there's the DEQ permit, there's Army Corps permit, there's the uh, MDOT information, the traffic impact study, and then also the building department and the fire department have issued um, some requests for information. Um, and then those are the key items. Matt, do you have anything else in your list? Would the would the boat study come from the Army Corps, or would that be an M dot? What what I what I would suggest, and what we've done in typical situations like this, is a scope like the applicant would retain um, an M dot pre qualified traffic consultant. They would propose a scope of services that would come to us. It would go to M dot, and it could also go to the Army Corps for the boat component so that they're aware, and MDEQ, so that they're aware of what that is. And then everybody can just sign off on that scope, saying, yes, we think this is the right areas to study, and then they can proceed with the study and then submit it to all those entities for them to look at. Um, as far as keeping the public hearing open, uh, I haven't had too, many, too much experience with traffic studies. I don't know if you have. Oh, yes. Uh, length Review. of time. <laughs> Wise um, on an average traffic study. It's uh, it typically takes um, anywhere on average. I mean, depending on the scope, you know, certainly thirty to sixty days. So that's could be, it, that it could, could be make more. it difficult to postpone to a date certain. Right. Well, what you could do is you could postpone to your to your June meeting, and if everything's not ready at the June meeting, you could postpone it again to another date certain okay. and keep it open. Is there a number of times we can postpone it? <laughs> There's no it's limit. It's unlimited? No, it's unlimited. Keep rolling it over. Keep rolling over, which the only benefit, one of the benefits <laughs> is we don't have to keep re-notifying everyone. Is that? Right, and everybody who is interested knows that they need to be aware that they Correct. need to check that date and be here for that meeting. Um, and then if they're here, they'll know that it's postponed again and they'll know what date it's postponed to. So they'll always be, be in the loop um, so they can follow that because they know the actual date that the Planning Commission is going to consider it. Makes them more aware of it. So they have Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Question. Sure. Yeah, question now. Sure, go ahead. We're, we're, we're trying to figure this out. Well, I, I just, just wonder, Rod, No, this would, well, through the chair. This isn't a, hold this, hold Wait a minute. Please th direct to the chair and the audience also, please be patient with us. This is a big project and we're trying to figure out the best way to keep the public informed and make a sound decision with this. So go ahead. Um, through the chair. Um, first of all, I've performed and reviewed tens of hundreds of traffic studies through my career and our firm does traffic impact studies. We would not be doing the study. We would review it on your behalf. The applicant's traffic consultant that they retain would end up doing the study. And MDOT's not going to be interested in boat traffic no. necessarily. They typically are not. That's something that Army Corps most, probably they're the number one that are going to look at, at boat traffic. Um, and DEQ may be interested. But typically, Army Corps is most interested in boat traffic. The vehicular traffic, MDOT, is going to be interested in. So they're going to want to likely review the scope of the traffic study, MDOT will, 
And then, like I said, the Army Corps can look at what's proposed for the, for the boat traffic study. And then the applicant's consultant would actually conduct the study. Then they would submit that to the township, to MDOT, to the Army Corps, to DEQ, and all of those entities would <coughs> conduct a review and give you a report. And then you would have the input from all of those um, various agencies as to what they, how they feel about the traffic study. In that case, I have a motion. I move to keep the public hearing open to receive clarifications to respond to open issues from DEQ, MDOT, Army, Building and Fire Department concerns until June 26th. I second. But the traffic is, um, traffic study and, and boat. So why don't we clarify traffic we're referring to vehicular and boat traffic? That would add vehicular and boat traffic study included to the motion. Anything second, else second. that we can think of while we're doing this? We have to go to these. Are we gonna? Are we gonna have them address these? Uh, yes. Can you restate? Can you restate the motion, <clears throat> please? Special land use. Keep the public hearing open to receive clarifications to respond to open issues from DEQ, MDOT. Vehicular and road traffic studies included. Army Corps, building and fire department concerns until June 22nd. No. Uh, 26. 26th. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Madam Chair, does that include, does that include the providing of the permits that they've? MDQ, DEQ, all of that. Okay. All the agencies are included. Okay, those are the studies, but we're looking also for the actual permits. But that's included in what the building department letter said. So all those enumerated yes. items is in that motion. It's in the motion. Okay. How about, <coughs> how about the uh, addressing the special land use approval standards? Do we want them to address these nine issues? Members of the audience, could you just Keep it down for just a minute, please. We're just trying to get this motion so we can make this happen. Okay. So, yeah. Continue. Yeah. And we haven't shut down. But you're right. We need to address that. Okay. Hold on a second. The special land use standards, items one through nine, I believe it is. I would suggest we make an add to the motion that the applicant personally address each one of those nine items. Okay, I'd like to add to the motion that the uh, applicant add the special land use approval standards, the address the nine items there. And I just say all instead of nine. All. <laughs> all uh, special land use. Address standards. all special land use. There's nine of them. Yeah. Applicant address all special approval land use standards. Special approval land use standards. Okay, Wadey's gonna restate the motion so everybody will some care. <laughs> Can you rewrite it too? Well, we might have to. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, keep the public hearing open to receive clarifications to respond to open issues from the DEQ, MDOT, the Army Corps, respond to all building and fire department concerns as well as vehicular and boat traffic studies and the applicant address all special land use standards. This to be, I guess, uh, 
held on June 26th. June 26th would be the next meeting. Well, not next meeting, it would be the time frame we think we can do this in. And if we can't, according to... You'll all other... come back June 26th. Thank you. We'll be here a lot more of us. Okay, but with that, hold on, hold on. Standing room only. That's the motion. I have a second. Who's the second? Who's the second? Harold. Harold. Harold's a second. Any more comments in regards to the motion? Roll call. Keith Fell. Yes. <clears throat> Edward Keller excused. Whitey Simon, yes. Christine Holcomb. Yes. Harold Bain. Yes. Mark Borchardt. Yes. Tom Kozell. Yes. Robert Musling. Yes. Kathy Schweiker. Yes. Okay. Motion is approved. Thank you. Okay. With that, I believe at this point we can close the public hearing. No. 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 Open. It's yeah. open. 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 But we're not done. <laughs> but we're not done. <laughs> we're not done. We'll wait for another I have to do a pilot. I have to address all that stuff. He does. Still. Yeah. Well, I didn't have the time to start. It's how we're not going to carry it out. There's too much. Okay. No. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Ye